Hello everybody. So you just learned how to turn on your first aircraft and how to deploy some weapons. So hopping onto the first multiplayer server you see. So the most reasonable thing to do is just to take the taxi away and go for it like everybody else. But for all the people who are just as boring as I am, we are today going to take a look at how to move around an airport, how to transit to and from a combat area and how to properly approach an airport again. Now it doesn't matter what plane you're flying, the first thing you want to look at is your own weight and what kind of weather we got out there. Just one word of warning, wind, which is one of the most crucial issues, is a bit weird in DCS. Normally you get wind direction as in what direction the wind is coming from. So if you're on a certain heading and that is the same as the wind direction, that means that your nose is pointing into the wind just like you want it on takeoff. That is also the way a human ATC or the AI tower controller in DCS is going to give the wind to you. However, if you look into the mission's briefing, that is flipped by 180 degrees. So once we're happy with our own loadout and weight, and we're positive on which runway to use, we're going to take a look at this, the aerodrome chart, which is currently provided in the kneeboard. We are right now up here on apron, one and we want to get to runway 24. As you can see each taxiway is assigned a letter of the alphabet so what's gonna happen on our route is we're gonna leave apron 1 taxi via Juliet crossing India crossing runway 20 along Juliet to runway 24. Now this is always easy with human ATC we simply tell him our parking position and he will tell us which runway is in use and how we taxi there. But we can already anticipate what he's going to tell us by taking a quick look at this aerodrome chart. In that case, you could already anticipate him telling you to hold short of runway 20 so he can check that there's nothing coming in before it clears you to cross that runway. Now, of course, on most public DCS servers, there is no human ATC, but it's still common courtesy to announce on simple radio that and where you're taxing. To do this you of course need the proper frequency which you find on the bottom left of the aerodrome chart. Now of course some servers have their own frequencies for certain aerodromes but that will be in the relevant briefing. So without further ado, Hawk 11 taxiing runway 24 via Juliet holding short runway 20. Now on the Caucasus map most taxiways aren't perfectly marked but you usually have at least a line in the middle one to the left and one to the right, checking that there's nobody taxiing on India and Hawkman 1 crossing India. Now coming up to runway 20, I'm gonna hold and check visually that there's nobody moving on the runway or towards the runway. Hawk 11 holding short runway 20. Okay, all clear. Now there's no ATC to clear me on, so I'm just gonna announce Hawk 11 crossing runway 20. Hawk 11 holding short runway 24. Now this is the time where you do your pre-departure checklist. This of course depends on the aircraft but usually involves making sure your takeoff trim is set, your flaps are set to the right setting, fuel is good and there are no warning lights up. Hawk 11 ready for departure, entering runway 24. Now we're lining up on the runway. ATC would give us the wind one more time, 
with the takeoff clearance just to be sure that we have the current wind. Now we are finally in the cruise and at what flight level you're cruising highly depends on what aircraft you have, how hot it is outside and how much stores you've got hanging off your wings. The F-18 has a neat little feature where you can actually let the plane calculate the optimal cruise altitude for you and for most other planes you'll actually have to calculate it yourself using the documentation. But almost every plane will have an AOA indicator with three notches in them. Now the slower you go, the higher your AOA to keep you in the air. So you can think of them as the slowest, the medium and the fastest notch. The fastest notch is the one the needle is pointing to right now and that is always maximum range. Now the medium one is maximum endurance, so maximum time in the air and should also be used for optimum climb. And then the slowest one is landing speed. Now coming up is the fence in point. The fence is an imaginary line. So you're crossing over from a safe airspace where your airbase is located to a more hostile, more dangerous airspace where the combat operation is actually taking place. So what you're doing on your fence in check depends on what airplane you're currently flying. But there are a few items that always correlate, as turning all your sensors on, making sure that your countermeasure systems are working, that your ECM systems are working, that everything with the plane is in order, and that your fuel state is as expected. A good sign that somebody forgot to do his fence in check properly is when he still has his lights on a couple of miles after the fence endpoint. Okay, we made it, we are on our way back out, fencing out, and that means, first of all, turning all our weapons to safe and turning our lights back on. Of course, we do another check that everything with our aircraft is in order, there are no warning lights, and we're checking our fuel state. Now, there are a couple of ways you could now approach the airport. One would be to make full use of the ILS, which is almost mandatory in bad weather, and the best way to do that is to put a waypoint 10 miles in front of the one way at 3,000 feet above the airport. And that waypoint will get you right on the end of the ILS glide slope. Now what we're gonna do today in this perfect weather is we're gonna do a normal VFR approach. And luckily we got the visual operations chart for the runway 24. Now we're coming from the southeast and we want to take runway 24. So we're gonna enter this control zone via the entry east and then continue and heading 009 until we make our turn towards the initial 24 and then enter the pattern above runway 24 until we finally start our landing out of the pattern overhead 24. Since this is a visual procedure all this can be done without entering any waypoints so all the important points are above some kind of landmark like east in a bay, west next to a town and the same for north right next to a town. Now for our own approach we're gonna leave a big radio tower on our left hand side and then do our left turn towards initial 24 right before a hill. Now to help yourself out you can add the point you're using for entry into your waypoints which I have done here with East. I've added it at 1600 feet which is the pattern altitude in Sochi due to all the high hills around it. Usually the pattern altitude is 1000 feet above the field which in this case would be 1100 feet. Now here we are we see the bay we wouldn't even need the waypoint of course we should now call ATC that we're about to enter the zone and from which entry, but since we don't have ATC in this case, we could just make a call to everybody, Hawk 1-1, entering control zone from the east. Okay, now we're pretty much above the bay, so we turn right 0 0 9 -er.
And there's the radio tower on the left, the big hill in front of us, so it looks like we're just on course. Okay, I've passed the radio tower, the hill's coming up, I'm now initiating the left turn towards initial 2-4. So here we are, initial 2-4. I could do a straight landing from here, but instead I'm just gonna enter the traffic pattern overhead. Okay, and finally you've been cleared to land, so on the crossroads this time you're gonna drop the throttle to lose speed, but we are gonna maintain pattern altitude, and then on the downwind we're gonna drop flaps, drop gear, and trim ourselves on speed so that we're completely configured for landing. On the downwind now, still a bit fast. Okay, on speed, flaps are down, tree green, and we're ready to land. Now we just need to fly downwind a little bit until we're 45 degrees offset from the threshold. Okay, 45 degrees, so now we're turning in and starting the descent. When you're 1000 feet above the field, 3 degree descent will take you right to the threshold, but right now we're 1500 feet above the field, so we gotta do a 5 degree descent. Altitude, altitude. Okay, I'm a bit left and a bit high, so I'm gonna come to the right and put my vector a little bit down so that 3 degrees is right on the aiming point. Finally corrected, time to get established. And flaring. Finally on the ground and we're gonna leave the runway as soon as possible, which is here, gonna be via Delta. And of course we're announcing it, Hawk 1-1, vacating active via Delta. Now of course we need another taxi clearance or we just announce which way we're taxiing which in this case is gonna be Hawk 1-1 taxiing to Apron 1 via Delta and Mike. Alright everybody I hope you found this helpful and interesting. Till next time.